thank you very much, Mario. Um, I'm really excited to be part of a company that is looking at how to really expand the options for developers uh, in areas that you guys have expressed some pain, and monetization is certainly one of those. Um, well, I'm going to be your next speaker, and uh, my name is Mike Hines. You may recognize me from previous jobs, such as um, your MC for the day. Um, a little bit more about me. I'm actually a, a serial entrepreneur. I've actually started four of my own businesses, uh, as well as having worked for a couple really big software companies, Microsoft and Amazon. My job at Amazon, I've actually got the best job in the whole company. Uh, they actually fly me around the world so that I can talk to developers like you about what we find that's working really well in the Amazon App Store. And then we can share that with you so that you can take a look and decide if that's something that you want to use in your apps and games or not. And then I get to listen to you and find out what is and isn't working with your apps and games and your businesses. I get to take it back to Amazon and then help the team at Amazon work on things that might actually alleviate some of the pain or reduce some of the friction points. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about right now are some of the things that we've come up with at Amazon to help reduce one of the biggest friction points that I hear about on a regular basis. And yes, it has to do with monetization. One of the things that we've found in our research on app monetization is that it's hard to make a living doing this business. When we looked at the most popular app stores, uh, it, with the help of a company called uh, Vision Mobile. And we, we found that depending on what app store you're in, only 40 to 60% of the apps in the app stores are above the app poverty line. Okay, what's an app poverty line? According to Vision Mobile, the app poverty line is that point where the amount you earn on your app currently in market can pay for the development and marketing of your next application. Okay, that's really important if you want a sustainable business moving forward, right? But even if you're the best app store out there, 60% still isn't enough to really guarantee a super healthy, vibrant ecosystem. And we certainly want to help people do better and have better, stronger, more viable businesses. So certainly Amazon Underground is one of the things that we've done to really help you know, ameliorate that problem and give you guys an extra option. But that's hardly the only thing we've done. So yes, there is more. And one of the first things, where are we here? There we go. Um, uh, one of the first things we wanted to do was take a look at where some of the problem lies. Mario talked about a lot of this, so I'm not going to go over a lot of those details again. But when the cost of acquiring users is going to be more than the actual lifetime value of the user, we need something to help turbocharge that, to add additional revenue to the income that you may be making using these traditional models on other app stores, uh, and to help you actually turbocharge the money you could even get through Amazon Underground on the Amazon App Store. And what I'd like to do is start with Amazon Coins. You may be wondering what Amazon coins are. Um, that's a reasonable thing to ask. Um, take a look in your tote bags, guys. I mean, if you have your tote bag with you, one of the things that should be in your tote bag is a certificate for a good chunk of Amazon coins. Um, yes, we've given all of you a bunch of Amazon coins as a result of coming here today. Now, this is pretty cool. One, dude, now you can buy like 10 pounds worth of games on the Amazon App Store. Um, two, you're going to get to see how this virtual currency actually works for yourself. Because Amazon Coins is exactly that, a virtual currency that you can use inside the Amazon App Store, whether it's on an Amazon device or a third-party Android device, doesn't matter. And you can use that to purchase premium games, in-app purchase items, um, and uh, basically use that anywhere on the, uh, the Amazon App Store is running. So. The key things that Ian touched on, I want to reiterate, one pound is worth 100 Amazon coins. And 
The nice thing about this is you can, if you buy a lot of them at one time, get a bulk discount. Amazon goes ahead and we foot the bill for the bulk discount. And with that, your customers can go out and spend more money on premium games or on in-app purchase games that, that you've got. The nice thing about this to developers is that the one pound equals 100 coins works the other way around. If you end up with 100 coins as a developer, it doesn't matter what discount your customer got when they acquired the coins, 100 coins still turns into one pound for you, regardless of how big that discount was. So you never have to worry about whether you're getting paid in cash or coins, because it's all the same to you. You're never going to know the difference, except maybe that the coins customer will actually spend more coins with you. Now, I understand Amazon's not the first company to come up with a virtual currency and offer that for sale for customers in their app store. We know that Apple, for example, came up with their own virtual currency, which they have then discontinued. So why, if other stores have launched and canceled their virtual currency, what makes the Amazon virtual currency different? One of the huge things that makes the Amazon virtual currency different is because we offer not just a way for Amazon to get more revenue and more customers working in the Amazon store, but we're going to give you the tools to use Amazon coins to get more customers into your game and more engaged with your app. And the way this is going to start is with the Amazon uh, customer. This customer we have here bought 10,000 Amazon coins which is actually pretty, pretty impressive. He's a big um, uh, Game of War Fire Age fan. And based on what we've learned earlier, uh, and Ian told you about power users, he's probably going to spend almost all of that coin money on Game of War um, uh, you know, Fire Age. And that's fantastic, because now he is going to be able to exercise more of his power user tendency and he's going to be able to get more things, and he's going to spend more time on the Amazon platform engaging with that game. And it's a fantastic thing that you can see particularly well in Japan. Japan is a, a, a huge market for Amazon and power users. Power users in Japan generate a whole bunch of income for us, and Amazon Coins is one reason why we get a lot of power user income in Japan, because they know if they're going to be spending um, up to $1,000 a month on in-app purchases in a game, you want to get as big a discount as possible, right? I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? If you're going to be a power user, the Amazon coins are great. But how do you use Amazon coins to encourage people to become power users in your app? Well, welcome to the Amazon Campaign Console. Using the Amazon Coins Campaign Console, you guys can create incentives within your own apps and games that help people engage longer, engage more deeply, and actually spend more money, more Amazon Coins in your game. Granted, it may not cost them as much money because they're getting a big discount, but 100 coins is equals, a, equals a pound for you. Anyway, the customers have gotten it. Now, what kinds of things can you do with an Amazon campaign console? You can incent specific usage. For example, maybe you want to give 1,000 coins to every, the, the first 1,000 people who finish level 10 of your game. Maybe you want to incent people to buy a larger coins package, or maybe a combination skins and gems package. And so you can offer a discount on that. Let me show you an example of what one of those promotions looks like for Hearthstone. This is a campaign that Hearthstone ran, um, 40 classic packs of Hearthstone cards. Now, normally this is a $50 purchase. However, they thought that they would be able to encourage people to engage more deeply, buy more packs, 
If they get more packs, they stay engaged longer to use the packs. They have more success with the game, which encourages them to spend more time in the game. Basically, everything is good when people can get some of these larger card packs. And a great way to convince people to do that is to give them amazing value. I mean, value works everywhere. It works in our industry just as much as it works in every other industry. And if I can give you a $15 discount, give you 1,500 coins back on a $50 item, for a customer, that's a fantastic deal. They're getting a $50 item for $35 now. That's, that's amazing. And if they can buy that $35 value-laden package with something that they've gotten a 15% discount on, that's even better. Now, for you, this is no money out of pocket for you because the $50 that you would have gotten for 40 packs is now $35 you would have gotten. Okay, well, doesn't that mean you're losing $15? Well, not if they never would have purchased the pack in the first place. If they never would have purchased the pack in the first place, the potential that you've lost is $50. So actually getting $35 for something that you sell as opposed to not sell is actually a really good deal for you too. And it encourages people to come back and play more often and buy more things if they've gotten a lot of enjoyment on that. Yes, you're actually encouraging people to really engage deeply with your game. And if you've made a fun game with really fun in-app purchase items, you've just increased the chance of generating more power users on the Amazon platform through the use of Amazon coins. Now, how do you advertise that these specials are available in your game? With Hearthstone, we got together and streamed Hearthstone on Twitch with Raynad27. Um, you may not recognize Raynad27, uh, but he's a phenomenally popular and good Hearthstone player. And he was giving out tips and tricks on how to build Hearthstone decks. And those tips and tricks were so valuable, he actually got 236,000 people watching him play Hearthstone on Twitch. Of course, they were also learning about all of these amazing discounts that you could get for buying card packs. Uh, with Amazon coins, so that was really helpful, particularly when you consider that there were over 10 million minutes watched of him playing Hearthstone and talking about these great deals on card packs that, yes, people were taking advantage of, so much so that this ended up being Hearthstone's highest single earning day when they made this promotion of those packs, and people bought so many of them, even the discounted ones, that they set sales records. Okay, <laughs> It'd be kind of cool if you could do that, right? Um, Amazon Coin gives you the tool to set this up in your own game or your own app so that this can be your experience as well. Um, we'll talk about Twitch a little bit later in the day today, but absolutely use Twitch to help amplify all of the goodness and, the, and, and value that you're offering here. And it's not just Hearthstone. There's another role-playing game. They'd rather we didn't use their name, but they're fine if we show you their data. Now, what they did was they offered a 10 to 20 percent coins rebate on in-app purchase items. They started in September and just about six months after what they found was that an installation on Amazon was worth about $15 a user while on Google Play it was only worth about $8 a user. That's actually a pretty significant difference and the developer is convinced that their coins discount made a huge impact in this difference. By the end of the uh, trial period that we did, we ended up with some pretty significant numbers. And, and one thing that they didn't put on the chart, I really want to point out to you guys. Of all of their Android downloads, downloads from the Amazon App Store only accounted for 5.5% of their Amazon downloads. Only 5.5% of their Amazon download, of their Android downloads came from the Amazon store. But 40% of, of their Android revenue came from the Amazon App Store. Wow, 40% of the revenue came from 5.5% of their downloads. There's no question that the value that they were offering to their customers through the Amazon Coins promotion played a huge role in that. So what do I want you to do? 
Well, when you launch your game on Amazon, I want you to take a look at the coins promotions that you can give your customers to encourage them to engage with all of the great content that you've made available as an IAP item. And I want you to figure out ways that you can help encourage people to get those items so they can enjoy what you've built into your game. And if you find people with whom you've really hit a chord and they really think that what you've done is brilliant, you're going to create power users in your game. Now, when you create the coins package, I want you to certainly advertise that these discounts are available. So promote it on Twitch, promote it on YouTube, uh, promote it on your app's Facebook page. If you have a user community, absolutely promote it there as well. You know, if you guys don't have uh, a Facebook page, a YouTube or Twitch channel, uh, if you don't have a user community, absolutely consider getting one. First of all, it's a great way to engage socially with your customers and your players, find out what they're thinking, hear what their comments are. It's also an amazingly brilliant place to monetize and to promote monetization packages just like this one. So seriously consider a way that you can actually engage and communicate with your customers, and it'll help you advertise things like Amazon Coins promotions. All right, so Amazon Coins, a great way to drive value and uh, increase the stickiness of power users and generate new power users. The next thing I want to talk about is Merch by Amazon. Um, you guys heard Ian talk a little bit about Merch by Amazon. It's basically our self-service service, self-service service, uh, tool that lets you create on-demand printed t-shirts with the goal of generating additional revenue from your existing intellectual property. What that means is the cool art you've already made can go on a t-shirt and you can sell them to make money. But it also is going to help you engage your customers and help them engage other customers and bring new people to your game. Now, <laughs> normally when I talk to a room full of developers like this, the first thing they ask me is, seriously, t-shirts? You got to be kidding, right? I mean, you guys didn't get into like Android development or Swift or, or Objective-C development so you could become t-shirt merchants. I mean, really, who wants a box of unsold inventory sitting in their living room or dining room, right? Um, but I'm being serious about this because none of the developers I talk to about this are naive. I mean, you guys all understand that you need to market your apps and you need to market your games. But because we've always been focusing internally on trying to do that through the game and trying to be doing that um, online through in-app advertising or, or other kind of um, advertising mechanisms compartmentalized into games, we've been really thinking inside the box. I mean, kind of like putting the handle on the inside of a coffee mug. I want you guys to think outside the box, or well, coffee mug in, in this case, and think about what you can do because t-shirts actually work. I mean, think about how many other things, other places where you've seen t-shirts. They can help build your brand. They can help build word of mouth advertising. They can help improve retention and engagement with your customers, and they can generate additional revenue for you. Certainly, in more mature industries than ours, t-shirts have been around for decades. And I want you to think about how you can do this all without having to carry inventory or spend your evenings opening up boxes of product and slapping shipping labels on it. All right, first thing, it's going to help you build a brand. How many of you have seen a t-shirt with a Nike swoosh on it? Oh, come on. Just, <laughs> yes, okay, thank you very much, guys. Or, you know, I guess it doesn't matter. It could be your favorite beer, your favorite football team, your favorite auto make. Um, but, I mean, Nike's a good example, right? Because they put their branding on clothes to sell shoes. All right, trust me, I don't think they're doing too badly on shirts and shorts and athletic equipment. I think they make plenty of money there. But, I mean, think about it. They started using branded clothing to help give brand awareness at athletic events so people would think about Nike in conjunction with these athletic events. Eventually, it came to the point where they're making a lot of money on shirts and shorts, but it was that kind of brand awareness. And that's why your auto manufacturer that's why your football team is there. That's why your favorite beer is there. Because it takes a brand, and when a person wears it, it makes it real. It makes it approachable. And that's exactly what you can do with your brand, is kind of make it real because it's now on a person, a person that you can talk to, a person who says, 
yeah, this brand is out there, and I like it enough to wear it. And when that happens, you can start reaching some really important people. Remember when Ian was talking about our influential geek as a user? Anyone remember his name? Yeah. Um, that guy is super important because he's one of the influencers who is going to move the body of the rest of the population into new things they haven't tried before. Um, I mean, you guys all know someone who knows everything about computers. You actually might be that person in your friends group, actually. These people are the ones that everybody asks when they have a problem, when they want to know what antivirus software to use, what hard drive to get, what games you're playing right now. You're the people who are, are, are in charge of shaping vision and, and shaping behavior. And if these people are wearing your t-shirt, that's a huge endorsement of your brand or of your game. So how do you get influencers to wear your t-shirt? Well, I certainly hope that your game or your app is instrumented well enough that you know who your best users are, people who've spent the most money, people who've spent the most time in your app or game. These are people who think what you've done is amazing. These are people who would love to go out there and influence on your behalf. So if you can find out who these people are, give them an opportunity to get a shirt uh, and help say, hey, I'm a really big fan of this game or of this app. Even better, if you know who they are, give them an opportunity to give you their address if they want and buy a shirt for them and send a shirt out to them. And they will be proud to wear that shirt of this game that they're really happy about and bring in a lot of their circle of people who look to them for influence with them. At the very least, they'll be a lot willing to talk about how cool the game is or how functional the app is and how good they are at it. So absolutely look at this as a way of engaging people who can influence circles um, and, and provide uh, that kind of word of mouth advertising. Now, it also pays to actually market to your own existing customers to help them uh, retain them as users and engage them because giving them something that they can interact with, even if it's as simple as a shirt, increases um, their investment in your brand and in your game. Um, a good example of users actually participating in this is um, uh, the marathon, marathons, uh, long runs. I recently finished a uh, 5K run. Okay, it's not a marathon, but I'll tell you what, I'm really proud of having finished the 5K myself. So what did I do when I finished the 5K? I bought the silly t-shirt. I did, okay, the race is over. Okay, I didn't come anywhere close to winning, but I finished. And, okay, it's done now, but I got the shirt. Why did I get the shirt? To commemorate the achievement and the fact that I ran five kilometers, and there were some hills there. I mean, they were all up, by the way. None of them were down. So I bought the shirt. Now, I've got a friend who's working on a game, and it's, it's going to be a pretty brutal first-person shooter game. And I'll tell you what. If the time comes that I beat the boss on level 10 of that game, oh yeah, I'm getting the shirt. Because that's hard work. Maybe not as hard as running a 5K for me, but it's a lot of work. And I'm going to want to show off, particularly if the boss, boss death is really, really cool. So have you got a point in, if you're building a game, do you have a point in your game that's really, really cool? Maybe you achieve something and get this amazing uh, sword or ring or coin or maybe the boss death on your level 10 is absolutely amazing. Turn that into a shirt. And as soon as the player makes that achievement, crosses the finish line of their 5K, give them the opportunity to commemorate that with a shirt. They, oper they will more often than not take the opportunity to get the shirt, they'll wear that around, and one, that gives them investment, and now they're advertising your game and your app, and they're talking to their friends about how good they are and how much fun they're having playing your game. Um, similarly, if you have a social game, pride and membership of a particular clan, how many of you guys have seen Pokemon Go shirts with uh, you know, one side or the other, uh, one team written on it? Um, I see a handful of those out in Seattle. So please, if you give your best customers ways to engage more deeply with what you've created, 
they will reward you on the back end of that. Okay, third thing, I, I, you know, last thing I told you about is the way to make more money. Brian Mashinter is the guy behind Dragon Veil. We saw um, um, the detail page for one of his shirts up here earlier. And what Brian noticed was that he's got a huge collection of players of his game who won't spend anything on IEP purchases, not even 99 cents for an in-app purchase. What he found was that a lot of those people are super happy to part with $20 to get a T-shirt. Why? Well, I mean, think about it. A T-shirt is real. You can put your hands on it. It's, it's, it's a great thing to have. And the nice thing about a T-shirt is, even if I'm not a huge fan of Dragon Veil, but I know someone whose kid is a huge fan, I can go ahead and buy that shirt and give it to the kid and have a pretty good guess that I'm going to be a pretty popular gift giver, even though I don't know anything about Dragon Veil. Now, this has worked out pretty well for Brian, and it can work out pretty well for you too. As a matter of fact, we've had developers come and tell us that they make more money on t-shirt sales through Merch by Amazon than they make on in-app purchase sales in their game. <laughs> I wonder... Um, if Nike makes more money on some of their clothing than they do on some of their shoe lines. Um, I bet you that's true in some cases. Uh, anyway, um, moving on. Um, it's really easy to get started. Ian told you how easy it was just to kind of upload the art. Um, and the nice thing about doing all of that is you actually get to set your own list price. Now, most prices right now are hovering around $18 or $19. That's fine. And Amazon, we take out our costs. And the residual that's left over between the list price that you set and the cost that we take out is a royalty that Amazon pays to you. And we'll pay you once a month. We'll do a direct deposit into your bank account. And it's, just, and it's really nice. So when you finish this process of setting up everything, you get your shirt on a store, just like Brian got this shirt on his store. And at no point have you ever had the give Amazon or anyone any money. You've never had to order a minimum inventory. You've never had to figure out where you're going to store shirts. You don't have to ship anything. As a matter of fact, if the only person who ever buys a shirt is your mother, <laughs> you know, that's fine. We're really happy about that. We'll go ahead and we'll print a shirt for your mom. We'll send it off to your mom uh, second day delivery if she's a Prime member. Your mom can be really proud of the shirt. My son did this. Look how nice it is. Wouldn't you like to play his game? No, it's going to be wonderful. And even if that's the only person who ever buys your shirt, congratulations. That's about $7 now that you wouldn't have made otherwise. So absolutely, it's going to take you, what, maybe 30 minutes to get assets that you already have loaded into the store. Um, it, it just seems incredibly silly not to take advantage of that. All right. Now, let's say you've gone ahead and made a shirt. Again, you can't build a better mousetrap and expect the world to be the path to your door. You actually still have to promote your shirt. And 80% of the orders you're going to get from your shirt are going to come from inside the app, 20% from outside the app. So when you promote your shirt in your app or game, please don't just drop it in the IAP catalog. That won't work as well as putting it where it matters to users. So for example, when a player beats the boss at level 10, right there after that amazing boss death, give them the opportunity to buy a shirt. Maybe someone has just sent their 100th fax with your fax sending software. Offer them the chance to buy a fax master shirt. Um, okay, I don't know really that much about faxing or if that would be cool or not, but, you know, think about how you could work that uh, into the very fabric of the app or game that you've built. That's a, that's, the, and it, I get it if that's a little bit too much work to do. Okay, still go ahead and drop it in the IAP catalog, but don't say I didn't try to help you on this one, all right? Um, next thing is about building a good shirt. What shirts work? Pick art that's easily identifiable with your game or your app. Dragon Veil, we saw a single prism dragon. That looks really cool. What works even better than single characters are collections of characters. So maybe a shirt with all the good guys. Maybe a shirt with all the bad guys. Those do tend to sell, tend to sell a little bit better than single character shirts. Now, 
the Amazon merch, merch by Amazon program lets you choose from a whole bunch of base shirt colors. Like a, this is a black shirt color. Um, just because we're offering you a bunch of choices doesn't mean that you have to pick every single one. Uh, if you do that, I guarantee the users will get this sort of analysis paralysis uh, thing going on and they won't actually end up buying anything. So I just want you to pick two, maybe three colors. One reason is because it's hard to make a design that looks as good on a white shirt as it does in the dark shirt. So have a design that you print on dark shirts, another design you print on white shirts. Um, and if you're trying to figure out which color to pick, when you look at the tool, Insider Secret here, we list the colors in order of their sales popularity. So if you're wondering what the most popular shirt color is right now, go to the tool and look at the first three colors. Those are the most popular colors um, on the tool. So quick tip on that one. Uh, again, the average sales price of a shirt is $18 because we see a lot on sale for $14.95. Um, go ahead and, and pick $19.95 or $19.99. That's a great place to start for a sales price for the shirts. Ask your fans what they want when they're purchasing something. Maybe they really do want a single character. Use that forum that we talked about to get input from your customers. They'll tell you what shirt designs they want to see, and then they'll have skin in the game. And when you offer it for sale, they're a lot more likely to want to buy one. It's a, it's a very powerful tool to use. And remember, since 20%, one-fifth of your sales are coming from outside your app, make sure that you promote your URL. You'll get a unique URL for your Amazon page for your shirt. Make sure you promote that everywhere you can put a URL, which means, yes, your Twitch stream, yes, your Facebook page, yes, your forum, but it also means printed materials. If you ever have anything printed, like a business card, Put a friendly URL link to your Amazon detail page so that people can actually see that you're really broad, you're really thinking big, and they can actually get a shirt for you. This is wonderful. And of course, we want you to help you reach more Amazon customers. I think Ian did a great job of this. Lauren is going to come up and talk to you more about uh, after lunch about how you can really attach to more customers. But it's a really big deal for us. Going back to what Ian showed here, Certainly, um, a large part of our success and growth in the UK has been uh, based on what Ian's been telling you about Amazon's huge investment in the UK marketplace. But another really big part about this growth, well, is you guys, actually. Because Amazon App Store has a really good world-class selection of global apps. But we also have an amazing selection of local apps specific to the UK market. And you guys are a big part of that. And I want you to be part of that success. And I want you to be part of this growth curve that we're experiencing in the Amazon App Store. I want you to be part of that great collection of local and of global apps in the Amazon App Store. So thank you very much. Um, after lunch, you're gonna learn a little bit more about Fire TV.